All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 6.30 uh, uh, public hearing. Uh, we are here today, uh, just want to start off by acknowledging that we're meeting on the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples, known today as uh, the Lekwungen speaking people, known today as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations, and their connections to these lands continue to this day. Uh, this meeting, like all meetings, is live streamed, so uh, the information will be flowing uh, out live and, of course, available later uh, on archives. Um, first up, uh, as part of our public hearing on bylaw 3531.104, uh, we have the manager of planning who will we'll describe the bylaw, Mr. Anderson or Ms. Jen Ms. Jensen. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the item on this evening's agenda is bylaw number 3531.104 to rezone the property at 2506 Wooten Crescent from one family residential use, which is the RS5 zone, to two family residential use and RD1 zone. This bylaw, if adopted, would remove the legal non-conforming status of the property by recognizing the existing side-by-side -side duplex, which would then provide for second story addition. The existing legal non-conforming duplex was constructed in 1957. At that time, duplexes were a permitted use and which continued through until 1986 when the current bylaw no longer included provisions for either the existing or future duplex units. The official community plan, however, does still speak to duplexes. With the property and surrounding area designated established neighborhoods, this designation supports a range of low density housing types, including duplexes. The RD1 zone allows for a duplex use subject to density and setback requirements. The existing building and proposed addition have both been reviewed against those requirements and been found to comply. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Uh, we have written submissions that were distributed as part of our package. I just need a motion to receive those. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. And I should just note that uh, A Councillor uh, Braithwaite is running a little late, so she'll be arriving uh, t a bit towards the end of this meeting. Um, and uh, for those, anybody who's here for the council meeting, it will start at 7 o'clock or immediately following the, um, the public hearing process. Uh, item number three three on our agenda is reading of any correspondence pertaining to the public hearing that arrived after our cutoff date. Ms. Hopkins, is there anything that is to be read into the record? Your Worship, there was none. Okay, so all the materials are in our packages and uh, will have been read. Uh, and last but certainly not least, as part of our public hearing, we invite anybody uh, who sees a property affected or has interest uh, in this matter. This is bylaw 3531.104, the duplex on Wooten, uh, are welcome to come forward at this time and speak to us on the matter. Is there anybody who wishes to come forward and speak to us on Wooten? So if you would, sir, just... Uh, Please just give, I know who you are, I think, but uh, just give your name and your municipality of residence, and then you're welcome to, to speak to the matter. Uh, and just for, to, for the first time, we've, we've instituted a timing piece. Are we using the timing piece in the public hearing piece? We're not. Okay, thank you very much. So you have the time that you require to say your piece. Uh, my name is Steve Bowker. I live on Harling Point next to the playground. Um, uh, I was the person who wrote the letter. Uh, about the duplex it was in friday's newspaper and i submitted a written submission did you all get that submission have you all read it we did mr Belker. yes okay i'm, I'm speaking here first of all um Ms. You, jensen, you have to speak to me, uh, uh, through me. sorry your worship Ms. Ms. Uh, jensen mentioned that uh, duplexes were removed in 1986 but my information this was that they were removed in the um the uh, community plan of 1967, which was funded by the provincial government in all municipalities uh, so that everybody could review their bylaws um, uh, because of the Strata Act. And that also included producing a community plan which had to be submitted by, uh, to your regional district. And I, I wonder where she gets her information about 1986. We can get some clarification on that matter. Anyway, I, I suppose it's not important. That it was still a remarkable thing for a council to remove uh, two um, zoning categories. Very remarkable. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any questions? 
if you've read all this stuff. We don't get to ask questions in this format, oh, okay. unfortunately. This is our very formal public hearing process. So we're here to listen, uh, and then we'll take the information at the end of it all. We then step back and, and reconvene this council and, and deliberate on the matter. So Okay. So I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, since you don't need the, the paper copies, I didn't know if it had made the agenda. So if you don't need the paper copies, do you mind if I distribute them to the audience? Oh. I can't stop you from doing that, so if you want. Thank you. Uh, but they are available on the on the uh, online agenda if anybody wants to have a look at it. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to come forward to address the public hearing at this time? This is again for the duplex on Wooten. And I'm, uh, please come forward. I'm just going to ask the question since this is, I believe, certainly my first uh, public hearing. Any if any note, uh, is there the ability for uh, if there's questions asked for uh, council to redirect those questions to staff at this time, or is that done after we uh, reconvene as council? Uh, Mr. Anderson? So, um, council may ask for clarity typically to the applicant regarding the, the presentation that might be made. Um, but in terms of uh, Generally speaking, the response to questions is not part of the no. public hearing. Um, could be considered by council at the time you're reviewing readings of the bylaw and okay. clarity asked at that point. Okay, okay, so for the most part, we'll capture any questions that you want to ask of that are driven by these comments and we'll ask the most staff in the uh, council meeting following. Please come forward. My name is Mary Schaffner. I live on Carrot Street, 2056. We're approximately six neighbors down from the proposed uh, rezoning property. Um, for those of you who don't know, Carrick is a dead end, but it doesn't actually dead end. It goes into Wooten Crescent and then back around. They're right on the corner of the lane. So I am here as a, as a neighbor. Okay, thank you. Did you want to tell us anything besides being here? Is there, is there a, were you in favor of it or opposed to it or have any concerns? No particular concerns at this time. Um, I think the concerns are not necessarily in the zoning, but the potentiality for the zoning, as Mr. Bowker has already uh, highlighted in his newspaper article. Also, um, more concerns going along with how big a structure and planning and building and all that kind of thing. Um, but I, I do have a question which I cannot seem to be have answered, which is under the current zoning, can he not have a proviso to to accomplish what he w wishes to accomplish and we don't have to rezone the property at all i've known the property since i was a child and uh, i grew up in oak bay and um, it was it's always been a beautiful property and i always liked it it's uh, particular style so i'm hoping he's going to keep to the same but that's not the issue tonight okay thank you very much anybody else wishes to come forward to address council I'll ask a second time, anybody else wish to come forward to address council? And a third time, anybody else here to speak to this matter? I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, at this time then, I just need a motion to adjourn the public hearing. So, so moved. Moved and seconded. Uh, is there anything else here procedurally that I'm required to do before I call adjournment? Seeing none, okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor, opposed, then opposed. Uh, the public hearing portion of this meeting is now adjourned. Uh, we will be uh, rem uh, stepping away from this office, or from this, uh, we'll probably just go back into the antechamber. We can't have any more input on this matter until we reconvene as council, uh, which will be at 7 o'clock. So if anybody wants to stretch their legs and get us a bit of fresh air, we'll be having our council meeting starting at 7 p.m. Thank you.
All right, uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our regularly scheduled council meeting of June 24th. Um, I want to start off by acknowledging that we are holding this meeting on what are the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples, those specifically Lekongan speaking people known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. And we recognize that their connections to these lands continue to this day. And I also want to point out that uh, we are live streaming this meeting as we do all our meetings and it's available now and uh, at future meetings as we, uh, so if you come up and speak, you back your head and your voice will be recorded. Um, I'm going to just ask that we change the order of the agenda so that we move number 10, which is de dealing with the uh, zoning application at 2506-2512 Wooten, uh, up to number two behind minutes and reports. That's just to allow us to have um, our debate prior to the public uh, participation period. So if I could uh, just move the amended agenda with that change. Move the amended agenda. Second. Move and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Uh, item on number one on the uh, agenda, we have uh, minutes of the council meeting. I'm going to do these three separately because I have a question on, on one of them that I would just like some clear, I think might be a, a small error, but I have to ask the, uh, the council of it. So um, in my uh, item, so item number one is the council meeting held on June 10th. And in regards to item number 15, um, I believe that uh, on the, this is changing the, the, the name from a meeting to a special uh, Committee of the Whole meeting, and I believe that Councillor Zelka was a, a voted against ch changing the nature of that meeting style. So I just, if you could just have a quick look at that, and maybe Councillor Patterson as well. It's somewhat irrelevant at the end of the day, but it's always nice to have he's accurate. Also voted against. So could we just have the, yeah. that item, the f item number one of those votes was those two voted against? And then the, the following are, are all correct. Okay. Any other changes or amendments to the minutes? Uh, so I just need a motion to approve the minutes as amended for June 10th. Move the amended minutes. Second. Move and seconded. Any di further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? Uh, next, we have Committee of the Whole, June 17th. Move receipt. Move approval. Move <laughs> approval of second. the minutes. Moved and seconded. Uh, and I just want to point that includes the appro the approvals, uh, recommendations made therein. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? And opposed. Thank you very much. And special council meeting held June 18th, 2019. That was just the one to go in camera. Move approval. Moved. Second. Motion seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to item number 10, so people could just move forward to that. This is the item that we just had the public hearing on. Um, so with that, um, this is a chance for members of council to ask questions of staff uh, and to deliberate the item in front of us. I'm just going to go to my piece here. Uh, so prior, do we put the motion, uh, is it appropriate to do the third, put the third reading on the table or just to have the discussion prior to that? So could we just have a motion to put third reading on the table? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions of staff at this time? And I just should just ex explain this to the audience because it's a little formalized and strange, but uh, in our land use planning process, uh, items come through various stages to get to, to decision when it comes to, to zoning changes. Uh, and so what happens is that there's a committee of the whole, there's first and second reading, um, then there's a recommendation for a public hearing date. So we take input at the public, at the um, uh, committee of the whole, and then the first and second reading is essentially a pro forma to get to the public hearing. We make sure that we, we, ha we, are, we are, uh, required by law to advertise uh, the public hearing uh, in a number of ways. And then after the public hearing, council then deliberates. So the, the point for public input on this item is now done. We're just now deliberating and are gonna make a decision on this particular item. Uh, it seems odd from the audience perspective, but that's just the way the legislation requires us to work. So now we are considering the third and final reading of this uh, rezoning uh, of the duplex. Is there any questions of staff? Uh, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, through you, I am, would like clarification as to uh, legal non-conforming status of duplexes in Oak Bay and whether it pre prevents or restricts in any way those buildings from being upgraded to uh, current fire or building code standards? 
I'll turn it to Ms. Jensen. Uh, through you, Your Worship, the existing legal nonconforming du duplexes that we have in Oak Bay, which is uh, essentially all of them except for a recent rezoning application from a few years ago, are considered legal nonconforming. So what that means is that if they want to do any repairs or maintenance to those structures that entail structural alterations, they need to go through the Board of Variance for approval for those works. Uh, if it's not a structural alteration, then they can just come in and uh, uh, do what they need to do. So painting, changing a door, that would be fine. If I could ask another question to Mayor. Please um, do. Again, through you. Um, in considering this application, do we have any um, protections um, in our bylaws for continu continued um, use of duplexes as rental stock. Um, I know that in some municipalities where existing um, dwellings are used as rental, there is uh, provisions to protect rental stock going forward. So if there's comments that could advise us on that, I'd appreciate it. Ms. Jensen. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, for the, the zoning uh, application itself, the zoning is looking at the land use. It's not looking at the tenure. So it's, it's saying whether uh, council would allow this to become a legal duplex in, in its own right. Uh, if the applicant wanted to move forward with a strata development, for example, and remove the rental component, they would have to apply for a subdivision of the strata, so creating two strata units within the same building. And for Oak Bay, that means that 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 application would come through council as the approving authority. So the um, through the legislation, council would then consider that application based on certain criteria that's listed in the legislation, and one of those would be considering the, the rental housing stock. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Uh, Councillor Zelka. Yes. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, through you to staff. Uh, I, I, I do um, appreciate the fact that uh, this uh, proposal under under um, discussion is relating to the land use, um, but I am concerned about the loss of, of a potential loss of rental in this sort of situation. Um, is there any um, uh, uh, restrictions uh, that? Uh, are available to us uh, on a future basis to um, to restrict strata or restrict uh, some some aspects of subdivision on this property going forward. Uh, the reason I ask about that is I understand from Section 242 of the Strata Properties Act that if the building has been left vacant for a certain amount of time, then that section does not apply. So um, I just want to get clarification on that first, please. Uh, Mr. Anderson or Mr. Jensen? Ms. Jensen? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Anderson. I'll, I'll be Ms. Jensen. You can. I'll. Um, <laughs> yes, Your, Your Worship, uh, there, there are um, opportunities for Council in the future to consider around um, protection of rental stock. One that has been used by most municipalities in the past uh, prior to the recent legislation the province has brought into place for rental tenure and zoning is uh, the idea of uh, setting a, a sort of vacancy rate level that below which uh, you will not consider conversion. Uh, properties to strata so that's one method and again the other is sort of recent legislation that the excuse me the province has brought in to allow us to look at um, zoning and and the protection of uh, rental stock in the community that's something that I think is in our future for consideration but those are the two main ones the uh, vacancy rate is the typical method used in municipalities Thank you, uh, Mr. Anderson. Continuing, if I may, please. Um, so I, I appreciate the, um, the um, I guess, from Oak Bay's perspective, these are these are uh, theoretical uh, tools that are available to us, but they're not actual tools since they're not currently enacted in our bylaws. Is this true where we would actually, actually have to modify our bylaws in order to use them going forward? Mr. Anderson? Certainly there would need to be council direction and policy on the vacancy rate piece. And yes, uh, in terms of the rental zoning there would need to be council consideration of changes to our zoning bylaw um so through uh through the chair i i, I refer um uh building and planning staff to the letter that came in from um, um mr bowker where he offered a suggestion on a change to the rd1 bylaw uh, similar to what you're describing where he, i think the wording along the suggestion was uh that uh for example if if the rd1 uh, strata um 
bylaw was modified to say something along the lines of strata plans are not allowed under this zoning category or under some sort of a, a condition having to do with vacancy. Is that something that we could uh, bring into effect at a later time to ensure that we have some control over uh, the land uses going forward after we deal with this land use aspect? Mr. Anderson? We can certainly review this. I just want to make a comment that um, zoning uh, doesn't direct strata. It's separate legislation, so we wouldn't put something in a zoning bylaw that spoke to what you do considering a strata conversion. So uh, just to make that clarification, I, I do think that as part of a review of how we want to further uh, or not protect rental in the community, we would want to look at all of our options available to us. And again, some recent options have been made available. So. Um, I'm, I'm actually quite fascinated then uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you could please in, in indulge me with, uh, with some of the suggestions. If it's not in the zoning bylaw, would we be creating a separate bylaw that would be specific to strata? Uh, uh, where would these mechanisms lie if not in the zoning um, bylaw, please? And Mr. Anderson, go ahead. I, I just don't want to get too far down the theoretical policy piece because we do have a very specific application in front of us. So uh, Mr. Anderson. So as I mentioned earlier, that the, the idea of using a, a vacancy rate limit to, to um, have in council's uh, decision-making package regarding a strata conversion that they have before them, that's something that you do by policy. So that's council policy. Um, and if you want to make changes to the zoning bylaw with respect to um, rental tenure, uh, you do that through the zoning bylaw. Uh, so I, I that's, there's there's disti distinctions here between policy and and regulatory changes that occur on this topic, and I think that's probably the rest is getting us a little bit deeper than maybe we want to go. Thank you. Just for my clarification, just because it's already, I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. Just these are items. I'm I'm going I'm to ask the question: Are we are these components of things that we will be discussing as part of our housing framework discussion uh, as we're looking at our housing options? It, it could be part of the implementation pieces around uh, considering housing options for the community, yeah. uh, certainly. Thank you. Mr. Councilor Zelka. Uh, I, I appreciate, uh, uh, Chair, your, your uh, allowing me the indulgence to ask this question that's uh, slightly off topic, yet for me quite relevant since um, um, how this property and properties like this go forward in terms of the use of the RD1 uh, zoning uh, I find very relevant and will inform how I may or may not vote on this particular issue. Um, I, 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 if I may ask another question, please. Uh, I wanted to ask um, uh, if, if staff could please help me understand why the council of the day, either in the 60s or the 80s, whenever it occurred, and, and, and the context around it, why was, uh, it seemed to be related to the, the brand new Strata Act as it came in. Uh, if staff could please um, enunciate um, why that bylaw was struck down by the council of the day uh, so to make these by these uh, duplexes non-conforming number one and uh, number two what provisions do we have going forward to alleviate whatever was uh, withheld by those by striking down the rd1 originally please thank you i'll put that to miss john always hard to ask why someone did something 50 years ago but i'll ask you to try <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you your worship um I'd be hesitant to speak to why a council of the day actually moved forward with some with with some of these initiatives. Um, what I what I can tell you is that since Oak Bay Incorporated, you have gone through essentially ten consolidated zoning bylaws. The first of those was uh, a implemented in 1927 and that ran until 1966 so that's essentially the time frame that you're talking about uh, in that first version of the zoning bylaw it essentially created residence districts and within those districts you could uh, have a duplex uh, so long as you met certain requirements so we didn't specify certain zones for duplexes um, when 1966 came along the zoning bylaw changed to a new bylaw um, it didn't allow outright duplexes anymore, but what it did was say that those duplexes that were existing, either through um, single-family dwellings that had been converted or new duplexes that had been constructed uh, prior to 1965, um, you couldn't build any more, but those ones were allowed to continue. So they were still legal units. They were not non-conforming. 
That continued through until the current zoning bylaw was adopted in 1986. And at that point in time, uh, the zoning map literally removed any uh, notion of duplexes within the community, and that's where you have these legal non-conforming duplexes now. Uh, in terms of moving forward, that would really be at the discretion of council as to whether you wanted to permit duplexes again or whether you want to continue looking at these um, on, on, on an individual basis. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say that it would definitely be part of that housing framework. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Anything else? I can come back to you if you wish. I'm, I'm tempted to ask uh, the current mayor if he knew any history from his grandfather's time. Not on this topic. No, I don't know anything. <laughs> All right. Then I'll, I'll come back to me later then. Thank you. He'd retired by 1967, just putting it out there. So he wasn't around for that change. Uh, is anybody? Yeah. Councillor Nee? Yeah, thank you. Um, through you, Mayor. To staff, um, I'd just like to follow up. Uh, for a little bit more detailed information related to the question uh, Councillor Patterson asked around um, uh, the procedures for um, doing repairs and such on existing non-conforming duplexes. So you said for simple repairs, one would go through a board of variance. And I'm wondering if you could just for, um, for clarity, just explain what that means to an owner looking to do repairs in terms of cost and time. Ms. Jensen. Thank you, through your worship. Um, the, the legislation sets out very clearly that if somebody has a legal non-conforming building, that they can look at structural alterations um, that would have to go through the Board of Variants. So essentially, if you need a building permit for something, you're likely looking at some kind of um, decision from the Board of Variants. So for example, if you wanted to take out an interior wall, that would mean you're likely going through the Board of Variants. So that process is literally making application uh, and then staff review, it goes to the Board of Variants and they make a decision on it. Uh, if you're looking at something very simple, such as painting the exterior of a house or, or replacing a chimney, you're likely not going to be attending the Board of Variants. Um, one thing it does restrict, though, is increasing that nonconformity. So in the case of, of this particular application, uh, if they were looking to add on that second story addition, that couldn't be considered by the Board of Variants because you're now increasing the nonconformity. Uh, so, and in that instance, if one wanted to do that, then what would, are the options for an applicant, just for the sake of clarity, please? Um, exactly why we're here tonight. They would actually need to rezone the property so that they now have a legal status and they can do additional works to their to their property. Right, okay. And uh, thank you. Um, so I'm just, I don't know if you're able to answer this question, but we have a letter writer who speaks about the concern, the vital supply of affordable child-friendly rentals. And that if I've understood the letter correctly, um, I, I might not be reading it right, but I, this is how I've understood it, that uh, by moving towards a strata that we return to the risk of um, undermining the supply of what's called affordable child-friendly rentals. I hope I'm interpreting the letter writer's um, explanation here, but I, do you, are you able to comment on that? It's just, I, I, I'm not, I can't make, I don't understand it, and I'm wondering if maybe you do. Uh, if I may, Your Worship, I, I don't think I'd want to speak directly to, to that comment, but just that um, this is a rezoning, and it's not a question before council at this time regarding strata. And so I think I'd advise council to stay within the question, which is the rezoning. Strata would be a separate matter. Um, and of course, I should state that uh, if something's stra converted and stratified, it's no longer um, direct rental, but it could be indirect rental as a result. Thank, thank you for that. Yep. Good. Councilor Green. Thank you, and through you, Mayor, to our planning department. Um, I noticed on page three of your report under public input, and I know this was written in May, so this it, it precedes the correspondence we've received uh, in the last little while from adjacent neighbors, but it said that the applicant had 
had discussed the proposal with several neighbors and there were no objections. However, we do have quite a lengthy uh, letter from uh, a next door neighbor who will be impacted, it appears, by this, this proposal. Um, I just wondered, ha have you had a chance to speak with the adjacent neighbor since the preparation of the report? Thank you. Or are there any concerns that you have as a result of that input? I'll just maybe speak for you. I think that's our job to consider the the input, not the staff's. I think we have to be the ones in this case to adjudicate that, Bruce. Trying to let you off the hook a little bit there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is there any, uh, any other questions, comments? Yeah. Councillor Appleton, then Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to staff. Um, this is potentially a, a, a simple question, um, but I'm, I'm making note in the correspondence, the issue was raised that in the definitions in the zoning bylaw actually classifies a, a duplex dwelling as a two-family dwelling where the two dwelling units are placed wholly or partially one above the other, whereas a dwelling two-family means a detached building used ex exclusively for residential purposes, two dwelling units situated side by side. And, and my, my sense is that most of the duplexes that I'm aware of in, in Oak Bay are, are primarily side by side. So I'm just wondering whether there's any issues caused by, the, by, the, by this particular definition or whether this might be cause for a little bit of, um, of bylaw cleanup or a, a small amendment to, to fix that. Ms. Jensen, you appear to have your finger on the, on the <laughs> microphone button. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Um, you're right. The bylaw could definitely do with some cleanup in terms of those definitions. Though those are are very much carry forward from the previous zoning bylaw. Uh, there actually is a third definition, uh, which is a two-family residential use, which which literally incorporates um, duplexes, whether they're side by side, up or down, and that is the definition that's contained within the RD one zone. Okay. Thank you very much. I was I was raised by a, a, a eagle-eyed literator, and I appreciate you raising the question here for clarification. Uh, I think Councillor Zelka and Councillor Patterson. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to speak a second time. Um, it's um, it's relevant to me to, to to understand the context of how this uh, zoning is being used, and uh, and I look to how it has been used to try and inform uh, inform inform me and, and and maybe some of my colleagues. If I remember correctly, um, uh, the last usage of the RD1 zone was for the house at 2290 Estevan. And uh, if I recall at the time, when that property was went through this, this process of rezoning, uh, the owner at the time said they would not stratify, uh, they would not strata the property. And yet, when I look at the property ownership now, the property at this point, 2280, 2290, they, they, it has been stratified um, uh, in the interim. Um, uh, but I don't recall any of that property coming to council. So to help um, educate me in terms of how uh, this property may potentially move forward, should we approve it with this particular zoning, um, uh, is a stratification of a property of an RD1 zone does it have to come back to council if there is no rental component to it at all? Uh, such as, I guess, what existed at 2280-2290 Estevan, since it didn't com come back to council for, for a stratification. Ms. Jensen. Uh, through your worship, um, there's a difference in the legislation between a new building and an existing building. So essentially, if you're constructing a new duplex, uh, if they were looking to strata those units, that would go straight to the, through to the land title authority and, and it does not need to come back to council. When it's an existing building, that's where if they want to move forward with stratification of the, of the units, that would come back to this council. Okay, thank you. Obviously, that's intended to prevent the loss of rental units. Okay, thank you. Yes, and 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 just to clarify, on the uh, with to for the protection of loss of rental units, which I'm very concerned about, since 26% of our residents are in rental units in Oak Bay. Um, uh, if the owner, uh, as part of the renovations and rebuilding of this house, evicts all the tenants and and leaves the building empty for uh, a certain period of time, uh, does Section 242 of the Strata Properties Act no longer apply after a certain period of time? I just wanted to clarify that, please. Mr. Anderson? I, I believe um, if, if it's an existing building that it needs to come through the strata process, strata conversion process. So whether it's empty or empty for a period, it's, it's an existing building as opposed to the new building that does not come to council. Okay. We can maybe get some clarification for that in the yep. future. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Councillor Patterson? 
Yes, and thank you for allowing me another question. This is a follow-up to Councillor Nay's um, previous question, building on my earlier question, and that is for for the existing uh, legal non-conforming duplexes, if they uh, if there is an application such as this where structural changes are required, and and based on the comments of staff, it then would proceed to the board of variance. Um, the Board of Variance decision then on that matter would be final and the matter would not come back to council. Is that correct? Ms. Jensen? That is correct. Thank you. And in case anybody's wondering why we're having so many questions on some of the minutia, this is the first time we've done this, and certainly in my in my corporate memory of taking an existing legal non-conforming and considering turning into a legal uh, conforming duplex. So hence the hence the questions about the ramifications. Uh, are there any other questions, comments, uh, Councilor Green? Thank you, um, thank you, Mayor. And I think your statement just now is is confirming what for me is is a concern, that is, that we are setting precedent potentially, um, and the potential loss of, of further rental housing as well. We have not uh, completed our housing plan, and it's something we're all looking forward to. And I'm just wondering, in in this particular case. Uh, and this is just a, a rhetorical question in, in some sense, is this premature um, ahead of completion of our housing plan? And I think you also referenced the, the housing strategy, housing plan that, that we're working on as a municipality. So that would, those are my immediate concerns, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Green. Uh, we have a motion on the table. Any, any other comments from Council before I call the question? I'm not seeing any. I'll, I'll just make a couple of comments. I think I'm I'm led here by a couple of things. I'm certainly I, I hear some of the concerns raised by the immediate neighbor about the potential uh, impacts of the changes to the house. Um, but I'm also worried uh, worried a little bit. We've seen a number of these duplexes that are legal non-conforming disappear from our community over the years um, because there's been this inability to legalize them and to do any substantive work. Um, un until we had this one legal <laughs> duplex zone, the, the onus of, of creating an entirely new duplex zone was too cumbersome and too onerous and we lost. So our housing stock has decreased quite considerably over time and I think this may not be a perfect example but it's not a terrible one and I think it's important for us to look at ways of, of allowing these to continue. Um, they are, all the ones I know of that exist are all on, on what you'd expect to be appropriate lots. They're on larger than average lots. They meet the setback requirements. They're, they're as the same size or smaller than a, a regular single family home as this one is. The, uh, I also know on this application, it's smaller than is allowed. Uh, this is allowed a 0.4 to 1 ratio of host to lot. It's down to I think 0.34. Uh, the setbacks are larger than required. The, all the pieces are there. And finally, I look at this, despite the concerns of the, of the, you know, the possible impacts of the, of the current residents, it is a land use decision, and we have to look at this, I think, from a, a land use perspective. Is this an appropriate use of land on this property? And I think that that's where we have to keep that, that, that consideration. Those are my other comments. Councillor Ney? Yeah, um, so I'm just following up on you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, 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 um, I agree with what you're saying, and I, 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 the strata basically would allow more home ownership and it would contribute to the housing stock and uh, the and it's doing it in a way that doesn't create significant imposition or congestion with other property owners in any significant way in terms of um, our um, our objective of addressing infill in the community and I I don't I mean I in terms of the concern around um, some loss of rental stock, I, I don't have the evidence before me that that would in any significant way address how, uh, rental stock, but we are embarked on another strategy to address our, our, our rental stock with our second, uh, secondary uh, suite uh, strategy. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel pretty conf I, I feel confident that we, we need to go through with this um, uh, this this uh, this zoning this rezoning uh, it's consistent with the objectives of the OCP it's consistent with our objective to do infill without uh, imposition of uh, surrounding areas and um, if we don't I fully agree with the mayor that we, we and I've seen this as well we lose that housing stock and it, that those two 
places to reside are replaced with one, and it's going in the wrong direction, um, or at least going in the opposite direction than what I understood we wanted to do around the infill. Any other? Oh, Councilor Zelka. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I appreciate this last opportunity to speak. Um, I did want to ask uh, one or two more questions of staff, if I may, through you. Uh, with respect to the laneway, uh, the Henderson Henderson Roadway, um, uh, to the, to uh, I guess to the west of the property, uh, it is one of the most heavily um, used, uh, I guess, laneways. Uh, uh, certainly, a lot of the children going from um, from the, the the north to the south part or south to north, um, coming from the various camps at Oak Bay Rec and heading north to the to the various parks uh, almost all pass through that that area um, just wanted to uh, to have some assurance from staff uh, what what arrangements will be made to ensure that this uh, roadway will be safe for the children during any potential construction and that uh, while there's no necessarily rural characteristics such as say the Linkleys to 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 worry about extensively um, uh, but uh, still the, the laneway has a characteristic to it is there any um, provision or any uh, any suggestions from staff in terms of how to maintain the characteristics of that laneway in spite of the the fact that the building will be nearly doubled in size um, in the end? Ms. Jensen, or maybe this is Mr. Horan. I get to go first. You get to go first, Ms. Jensen. Uh, if this application moves forward and council adopts the zoning bylaw, should the applicant want to move forward with the with the um, renovations to the existing duplex, uh, they would go through a building permit process, and so they would be subject to uh, any requirements that go along with that. For example, where vehicles are parking, tree pr preservation, and so on. There would not be any specific requirements um, with respect to how they are landscaping or or um, as such. Uh, as far as uh, the r laneway itself is concerned, because this is not adding any density to the, the site as is, you already have two units and it's being maintained as two units, there would not be a significant amount of um, upgrades that would be required off street either. Uh, related to that, is there any way that um, uh, 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 the report, the staff report, suggests uh, that with the uh, garage um, in the backyard, that there are you know space for two cars, essentially off the laneway on the property. However, when, when I walk the pro pro property, uh, that particular garage appears to be rather full of stuff, and 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 the the bays appear to be rather small um, uh, by today's standards in terms of, of the cars. Is there any way that we can uh, um, uh, since since this property will most likely have more cars associated with it. Is there any way that we can uh, uh, assure or, um, or um, uh, encourage uh, less parking on that laneway and more in the actual garages just to ensure that there's off-street uh, off parking, I guess you could say? I guess specifically within the zoning bylaw that we're talking about here. Yeah, to clarify, that was part of the review for this application, and there is ample parking on site for the vehicles, including both on Henderson and Wooten. You have two driveways that are, are uh, substantial enough to accommodate tr parking. So the assumption then is that there will be uh, little to no parking on the actual Henderson laneway, is, is the assumption of staff, uh, that it'll basically be either in the driveway in the front or in the parking uh, garage on the property on the side, is the assumption. I'm not sure that that's an assumption. I, I think the question really is how many parking spaces are on the are on the property. Yes, they meet the requirements of the parking facilities bylaw. What is that on this zone? Uh, is it two for per this, unit? it would be two two vehicles per unit. So four total. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'm not seeing any. Okay, I will call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? Councillor Zelka. Opposed. Sorry, Councillor Patterson, were you opposed? Okay, Councillor Zelka and oh, and Councillor Green opposed. So we have three opposed to the application. Okay, the motion fails on the on the vote. So there we go. Item number eleven defeated. Um, we have item number back to item number two. Mayor's remarks. Uh, all right, I'm just going to uh, jump in here. I, I don't have much to say in terms of activities. I'll, I'll touch on those a little bit later. I, as, 
I just I only really wanted to say here on my on my remarks was just really uh, re reflecting on a couple of events that I've had a chance to participate in uh, the summer art tour and a number of other ones um, just on the importance of our community gatherings and uh, uh, how much I appreciate the council support for those gatherings and the community support we have I was just thinking just we're just starting summer we have the public art going on uh, including a bunch of events around that and the arts and culture week uh, we have the um, night market uh, we have street music, we have block parties, we have fundraisers going on like Sausage Fest, uh, we have the, all the parks and recreation activities and camps, and we have uh, all kinds of other fantastic ways of, of enjoying it. So I just want to say thank you to all the people out there in the community who actually put those on. It's almost entirely volunteer driven uh, and staff uh, supported, and I just want to thank the staff and the public for that. And that's some of my comments uh, for tonight. We go next to the public participation period. Oh. I have, yeah, we have public participation and then new business. Is that, sorry, Ms. Vrela, did you want to add a, a change to that? Okay. Uh, we have public participation period, so come forward. Uh, so just uh, so everybody understands, we have up to 20 minutes allocated for this section of the meeting. Um, in these 20 minutes, each person is allowed up to three minutes to speak. Uh, it can be on any topic related to items related to Oak Bay. Um, there are a couple of items, and I, since I see people here uh, who are, have interest in a couple of land use items later on in the agenda, uh, this is your chance if you want to speak to them. However, they, if they're going to first and second reading and then a public hearing, uh, the full public input will be available at the public hearing, but it does not preclude anybody from speaking to any topic here. So with that, again, I tend to ask people to just if you write down your name as you, as you come to the counter. Uh, if you just say your name uh, into the microphone, as well as your municipality of residence, and then you have three minutes to speak. Good evening, Vern Bigden, Oak Bay resident, uh, speaking today on the topic of HRA number seven. My wife and I are local residents heavily impacted by this proposal, as our home is directly across Linkley's from the subject property. We ask you today to take measured steps as you carefully consider this application. Development is a one-way trip, and after this large lot is cut into two small ones, it cannot easily be reversed. Please do not pass the first or second reading of this bill. Haste makes waste, and it would be a waste to ruin the ambiance of Linkley's with this spot zoning. The existing house is not under imminent threat, so why act in haste? We draw your attention to the rural ambiance of this special part of Linkley's. We invite Council and the Heritage Commission to come walk Linkley's with us and generate a plan to protect this area. Come see the hawks, eagles, herons, owls, flickers, towies, and the jays, robins, hummingbirds, sparrows, and swallows. Come see the dog walkers, the hikers, and the young children on bicycles practicing their skills on this quiet lane that is mostly devoid of car traffic. Construction sites are rough and tumble environments. Cement trucks and other large trucks have drivers that feel no attachment to the neighborhood. Get in, get out, the clock is running. There's a district tree over 100 feet tall at the bottom of our driveway. It has low sweeping branches that extend out over Linkley's and into the applicant's backyard. Yep, Linkley's is that narrow. You will certainly notice it when you come for your visit. These branches are a favorite perch for one particular owl that likes to hunt our Oak Bay rodents. I am concerned that this branch won't survive the construction project and that this owl's domain will just get a little smaller. And what of aging infrastructure under our feet? We were told that the underground pipes are compromised. Surely all the heavy equipment traffic related to construction is going to have an adverse effect upon them. Are we going to hook another house up to the pipes that haven't been touched for a long time? Uh, is the applicant required to fund replacement of these pipes or will other taxpayers be doing that? In closing, the Heritage Commission meeting of December discussed three points. Number one, Link Lease's unique rural setting is an important feature and should be protected. Two, community amenity contributions require an overall plan, and this planning work has not yet been completed. Third, more applications may be encouraged by hastily approving this one. It is now up to each member of council to look beyond this spot rezoning application and view the larger picture of this unique area and protect it. We implore you to plan carefully. Please do not pass first or second reading of this bill. As the carpenter says, measure twice and cut once. It would be regrettable to do otherwise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who else, anyone else would like to come forward to address us? Mm -hmm. 
My name is Kelly Wright. I am an Oak Bay resident. And uh, I just want to address uh, 602 Newport as well. Uh, the owner of 602 Newport claims that she consulted with her neighbors, and it's important to know this is not true. She did not do the appropriate neighborhood consultations. She selectively informed only a few neighbors of her plans. Uh, you can imagine why she did that. Uh, most of her immediate neighbors were not consulted. This equates to no community consultation, and we therefore ask for a delay in this development proposal until proper community consultation can occur. My second point is that uh, Kevin Murdoch stood on my front doorstep <laughs> during uh, the mayoralty campaign, and I told him my main concern was the spot zoning in Oak Bay, and I pointed particularly to 602 Newport. Mr. Murdoch told me at that point that he was not in favor of spot zoning, and I responded that he had my vote. This is a rhetorical question, because I don't think I'm allowed to ask questions, am I? <laughs> Mayor Murdoch, why are you now in favor of spot zoning? Thank you. It is a rhetorical question, but I am not in favor of spot zoning in general, but I do have to deal with any application coming before us by law, so. I am, uh, I am still required to, to consider this. Is there any other piece to come forward? Okay, my name is Pat Kale and I live at 641 Newport. In response to an application for an HRA and two lot subdivision, Neighbors met yesterday and formed a neighborhood association to be known as the Linkley's Newport Heritage Conservation Association. Our goal is to work with the municipality to preserve the natural environment between Central Avenue and Island Road. We believe that any approval of spot zoning or subdivision at this time will interfere with the preservation of the single lane canopied street. As summer is upon us and the July 1st long weekend only five days away, we ask that a tentative public hearing date of July 8th be rescheduled, ideally for September or at least later in July to allow more people who may be on vacation to attend and voice their views on the impact that subdivision will have on our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carroll. Anybody else wish to come forward? Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> My name is Bob Louie, and I'm a uh, resident at 585 Linkley's, uh, Oak Bay. Uh, oh, sorry about that. There is- uh, Project leader. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the conservation of Linkley's Lane. Uh, I have great, we on the immediate neighborhood area have great concerns about the impact of this uh, rezoning application on that area. I, I, I hear some, I, someone said that the, as, as requirement for this uh, subdivision application, that there would need some uh, widening of the Linkley's Lane around that area and perhaps some pavement. This cause, as you know, it causes us great concern. Um, <clears throat> they are, um, we need to preserve these heritage areas uh, and do a better job of it. Uh, some of you may or may not know that the, the federal government has, uh, a few months ago, Catherine McKenna, the minister, uh, federal minister of environment and climate change has just announced a huge program, a hundred million dollars uh, to help uh, conserve uh, natural habitat in urban areas, not rural areas. They're well looked after, but certainly in cases like uh, this little piece of paradise that we have, Linkley's Lane, it essentially is a little woodlot with lots of different trees and vegetation on it. And we feel that the uh, uh, developments like this uh, will negatively impact it. In, so. We can, uh, my, part of my background is as a, as a professional forester with an extensive background in soil science, head of the uh, soil conservation unit which provided 
lot of technical information to the Agricultural Land Commission, to also to uh, uh, technical information to municipalities such as North Saanich, Highland, uh, member of the um, Central Okanagan Regional District Technical Committee. Uh, we have provided a lot of information on to assist people like the staff here. We have worked with uh, 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 sufficient geologists, climate people, vegetation ecologists, botanists, and uh, uh, animal zo zoologists to help preserve and maintain some of these little areas. Now, this is not a big area, I understand. But it is very special, as you all know, to us and to you people in council. So I think that it, it, it's impe it, it impe uh, we should speak, uh, take special care on this one. This is an article about this uh, just two days ago on Saturday about this particular program. And it says, as Canada hab habitat disappears, or I would reword that as Oak Bay habitat disappear, conservation needs to start at our doorstep. So we need to start conservation at our doorstep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Louis. And, and I will uh, encourage anybody who has uh, comments on this application, if it goes through first and second reading and public hearing, please do write us letters because this sort of short time frame is not always ideal for, for making uh, detailed points. And we do actually read all those, uh, all those letters as they come to us. So uh, anybody else wishes to come forward and speak to us? on any matter related to Oak Bay. Welcome. <coughs> Richard Roy, Oak Bay. Um, it's surprising uh, the number of neighbors um, of 602 Newport to, who have not uh, been consulted on the details of the uh, subdivision. So I think it's um, perhaps only reasonable to uh, schedule the public hearing for after the holiday period to allow for a proper co consultation. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward and address council? Oh. I hope I understood you correctly. Did you say we could speak on any matter? You may. Well, thank you. <laughs> I sent off an email to you all and to staff, but it was at 416, and you may not have had a chance to read it. So I would like to have permission to read the email. Yeah. And my name is Marion Cumming from Oak Bay. Welcome, Ms. Cumming. You, you have three minutes still. Yes, thank you. The, uh, I'm wearing my hat as a private citizen, not a member of Oak Bay Heritage. And uh, I would like to express my gratitude for your diligent efforts to, to work on the HCA. It's been three years now, and the, there have been ongoing discussions with Meg Miller, who I see is here today and has come forward with an application to undertake three weeks of blasting, which implies that he, um, he definitely would like to withdraw from the HRA proposal. And I'm hoping that there is a way of bringing the um, neighbors and the community and Mike Miller together to make one final effort to actually implement our first o HCA in Oak Bay. And uh, the, should he proceed, the, it would mean building um, the, um, well, I'll, I'll read what I had written. Um, he had said to me that I should talk to his architect, and I refrained from doing so, but was elated to discover that his architect has experience designing in sympathy with heritage architecture. And what has happened is that the, um, the current the house designed by the architect is in brutalist style, 
which many of us find highly incompatible with the H the, with an HCA. And um, according to an arborist, the the intended blasting could damage and even kill Gary Oaks, so that should definitely be avoided. <clears throat> As for the preferred resolution to the current impasse, I hope that Mike Miller will be persuaded to return to negotiations with the aim of bringing neighbors closer to an agreement on an acceptable number of character houses and possibly allowing a strata-style drive that would allow access on Prospect as well as on York Place, allaying some neighbors' concerns about too many driveways and too much traffic. <clears throat> to his credit, and I'm certainly grateful for his patience, he has accepted a number of modifications that he had earlier opposed. The statement of significance outlining the character-defining elements of Annandale's old wall and the value of a renovated carriage house ought to be acknowledged with appropriate adaptations. We have come very, oh, my time's up. Thank you. It goes quickly. It's coming. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to council at this time? Anybody else coming forward? Not seeing anybody else, so if no one else, I'll bring it back to this table and we'll move on to the next order of business on the table, uh, which is uh, new business and verbal reports. And I do, uh, there, was, there was some consideration uh, that Ms. Cumming raised the point of the, of the land at, uh, at 1561 York. Um, that land, just for clarification, is it is wholly owned by uh, the by the wholly owned privately, and they have a f complete right to do what they see fit on that property. Essentially, uh, it is potentially part of the future heritage conservation area, but is not currently under any uh, heritage recognition or conservation. Um, that being said, there is I, I wouldn't mind bringing forward the idea at least of uh, uh, under new business of uh, of adding it to a heritage registry. I know the owner is here, he's there at the back. Uh, so I don't want to uh, move that forward. I think I would like some more information from staff in terms of what, what that would mean. A heritage registry is not obviously protection, but it's just recognition uh, of that, of the history of that property and some of the heritage assets on it. Um, but before I go down, uh, too far down that path, perhaps I will, uh, um, I, I might just ask if, I'm not sure if the applicant's prepared to answer this question or not. Or maybe I'll just make the motion to do that. To do, it'd be something along the line. Maybe I'll get some direction from staff on this. Uh, if I were to do that, would it just be to direct staff to come back with a report on the possibility of a heritage, uh, adding the property to a heritage registry? Mr. Anderson? Yes, that, that would be a, a motion that staff could, could address. Okay, and that would, that would include some comments about the the viability of that and what sort of heritage assets would be part of that, if any? Yes, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I would I will make that motion under new business. Do you need a second? Yeah. I do need a second. Second. Um, but I would like to actually ask if the owner would like to speak to this at all. Uh, I would invite him forward. Uh, we wouldn't be making decisions today. It would just be to refer it to staff. And I, I will, as, is that a yes? He's going forward. I just want to acknowledge his, no, come forward, come forward, please. Uh, I do, do want to sort of make, make a public statement here. I, I, it should be noted this is a single uh, use, like a, a, a single family home uh, application at this point. Where a council is out of this process for any reasonable mechanism. There's a lot of rights attached to being a homeowner on this land. And I just want to acknowledge that uh, Mr. Miller and his wife have done an awful lot of work on this to maintain the heritage aspects. And I was very happy to see the work that you're doing to carefully disassemble the, the Annandale wall and, and, and uh, work towards keeping those heritage assets. So welcome, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council. Um, so I'm not sure if there's specific questions, but I do have a letter that maybe I could read uh, briefly and then answer any questions. That'd be great. Okay. Um, so it's uh, 
wasn't totally planned to speak tonight. Um, uh, dear Mayor and Council, um, as you're aware, we attended a committee of the whole meeting on December 10th, 2018, where Council considered our application for the Heritage Revitalization Agreement and Subdivision of 1561 York Place. At this meeting, we presented a concept for a four-lot subdivision, which was built around our family home and included designation of the York Place and Prospect Place walls, respectively as well as a designation and adaptive reuse of the carriage house, which was intended to be moved at that time to Windsor Park. At this meeting, the public shared their input on the proposal and council subsequently directed us to work directly with the community and district planning staff to refine the application and resolve the outstanding issues that were raised, more sensitive heritage preservation, single vehicle access and green space preservation, to name a few. After the Committee of the Whole meeting, I worked in earnest for several months with, key, with some of the key stakeholders from Oak Bay who represented a board cross section of interests. Together we drafted a memorandum of understanding that outlined how a revised application could potentially address the outstanding issues raised at Committee of the Whole by the Heritage Commission. I'm going to have to bring glasses next time. <laughs> Uh, this process, although challenging, did yield a revised plan which had support and buy-in from some of the key stakeholders. I felt optimistic the proposal would be supported by the wider public. As such, we hosted a follow-up open house at Windsor Park Pavilion on May 1, 2019 to present this concept. After this meeting, it became clear that the support that had been gained through the working group process did not translate into support from the entire neighborhood. We tried again in earnest to keep the process going to see if the plan could be adapted and salvaged. In the end, it became clear that after nearly three years of working on the proposal, we were not going to be able, be able to satisfy all the interests of the property, including that of our own. As such, we have made the decision to withdraw the HRA and subdivision application and have decided to continue with, with construction of our family home. Since that time, it has come to our attention that there is continued interest in trying to find a suitable donor site for the carriage house currently located at 1561 York Place. In the spirit of joint collaboration and cooperation, we are willing to work with council and the district planning staff to accommodate this request, notwithstanding that we are expecting to receive our approved demolition permit from the district staff within a few days for the carriage house. Provided this work remains on a voluntary basis and does not result in any encumbrances to our property, we are willing to work with staff and council to find a suitable donor site for the carriage house. We are prepared to offer until August 31st, approximately 75 days, to find a suitable donor site for the structure, after which time we intend to proceed with our approved plans for the property. And I have a copy for your records. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I don't believe we have the option of protecting that house if we wanted to, uh, if there's a demolition permit in place, but uh, I definitely appreciate the spirit in which that's given. Um, thank you for that. I got, uh, I'm, I don't, we didn't have any success finding a home for it last time we tried, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe there's some. Perhaps his worship can help <laughs> me find a place. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> no room in my backyard, I can tell you that much. Um, yeah, no parking. Oh, El Zelka's got his hand up. <laughs> Sorry, going once to the first bidder. Offer um, an acceptance is law. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Miller, for that. And I uh, I appreciate that. Is there any uh, any questions of Mr. Miller while he's standing here? Is this kind of, uh, we are sort of, we'll bring this back for consideration in terms of actually anything to do with the Heritage Register. Um, uh, last I talked to you about this was some time ago, but is there, do you have any thoughts on being, on having your property added to the Heritage Register? That you want to share at this time you don't have to uh, you may want to take some time to consider when the staff report comes out um we we particularly aren't in yeah yeah uh, enthused by the idea however um happy to work w again through um th uh through council and or staff on specific items that might be of interest um uh in the greater good Oh, thank you. And I will say as, yeah, as an example like this. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. I think this is a good example of, and appreciate you stepping forward like this. I do appreciate also the work you've done on the wall so far. So, making every effort to protect that. So, and thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. No questions for you. I don't believe. Thank you. So, thank you for that. That's good news. Uh, is there any? So we have a motion on the table. So just to be to, to ask staff to come back with some information on this aspect. 
any further discussion, Councillor Name? Just, you know, for the sake of, you know, absolute clarity, I just like from the move around or the seconder to speak to what purpose this precisely would serve to put that. Um, well, we're going to ask for information. I appreciate that, but obviously there's an intent behind the motion to do so, possibly. So I'd be interested in hearing from the mover seconder uh, what what um, wh what one's hoping to get out of that, and uh, second, if there's any information currently about what implication it has for this property owner at this time. Uh, certainly, and I, I think. A lot of that information will come back with the staff report. I don't know all the all the implications for it. Um, my motivation for this is largely just to, uh, I guess, signal that there is a there was a through the heritage conservation area statement of significance development process and through the uh, now now stopped uh, heritage revitalization agreement process. There was uh, recognition that these lands, as part of the original Annandale estate, had some significant uh, you know heritage value or just. Uh, part of the, the story that's told and, and the nice thing about heritage registries as opposed to designation Well, they don't offer protection. They do capture the stories and if we add it to the register then those 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 heritage aspects would be captured for our for our purposes and you know in future should there be some more substantial land use changes They would help form the framework of that conversation. So it is not intended to stop anything uh, It's just really there to help I think capture that those stories uh, Councillor Green Yes, thank you. <clears throat> and I really appreciate all of the efforts that have gone into this project over the last, um, certainly 18 months that I'm aware of, um, both by the Heritage Commission of Oak Bay and by all the staff, by, by Mr. Miller, his staff, and so on and so forth, and neighbors. And my only concern about moving in this direction is raising and then trying to manage public expectations because there was a lot of hope and expectation around this proposal initially, and I, following on, on Councillor Ney's comments, I appreciate what Mr. Miller is, is saying tonight, and I appreciate the response from this council and our mayor in particular, but again, I, I'm concerned that we're raising expectations in the community about a, a, a situation over which, in the end, um, we, we don't have a lot of control under the current um, situation. So. I just want us to be careful and cautious that we don't raise expectations around what might or might not happen and that whatever we're trying to do is both realistic and, and pragmatic both for the community and for the owner. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Green. I think actually an excellent point because I think it's very important to recognize this is not a situation whereby Council this is a uh, owner of a lot that has absolute right to do uh, to build a house on that lot and, and have access to the street. And we, you know, I think there's full recognition of that. I don't know if Mr. Anderson wants to add to that in a commentary in terms of our restriction on this, but I think it's probably better to come back in the report than it is if that's part of it. But uh, th this, it's important, I think, Councilor Green, you raised it, just to recognize this is not a, we're not talking about doing something of a, of a protection of nature here. We're talking about really just recognizing some of that, that heritage value and, uh, and working, I think, hand in hand with the applicant who's demonstrated again over and over again his willingness to help where he can uh, with uh, protect those heritage assets. So I think we're doing this in the, in the spirit of a partnership and trust, not trying to stop anything. So Count Mr. Anderson, do you have anything else to add to that or is that sufficient? Yeah, I, I really don't have that uh, much more to add, Your Worship. But just to confirm that there is a, a building permit in place for right. a construction of a, a dwelling on the property and access is uh, to that dwelling. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? All right, thank you very much. That was my, my sorry, last minute new business on there. And I appreciate Ms. coming, bringing that forward. Um, any other new business, Council? Uh, uh, Councilor Patterson? I think, I th I hopefully, Mayor, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the point in the meeting where I uh, can provide a notice of motion for a resolution that I would like to bring forward to Council at a future date for a re-examination of the, for Council's re-examination of municipal policies and bylaws for its approving officer. Just for clarity, I mean this as a macro, not a micro view, um, and it follows what has been done by other members of the CRD in providing greater 
clarity and transparency uh, by providing more information on their websites and links to development policies and processes and to better understand the authority of council and the role of the approving officer in land application process. So uh, it's not something I, 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 you know, I'm not looking to, for council to start reanalyzing in detail every bylaw, but to simply understand what the listing is and consider then what other members of the CRD are doing, consider if uh, what we see is what we want to stay with for Oak Bay, whether there might be new ideas brought forward, but it a work in progress. So it's more of a, of a resolution to get a report from staff. Okay, well, I'll just expect, just work with, uh, with staff to come forward with the, the wording of that, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that at a future council meeting. Thank you very much, Council Patterson. Anything else under new business? I'm seeing none. Okay, just report from the Capital Region District. There isn't much to report. Uh, we had a very long meeting, but nothing much got done. At uh, the last one, uh, we did receive the new annual report, though. So if you, anybody's interested in what's happened in uh, the CRD over the last, in 2018, it's now up on their website. Uh, now we have other verbal reports, and I can't remember which direction I started last time. I think I'll start with Councillor Appleton. Nothing to report? Okay, Councillor Braithwaite, welcome back. Thank you so much, and I apologize for my tardiness today. So I did miss your opening comments, and I'm assuming that you did mention something about the Ride Don't Hide. I actually didn't talk about oh. any of the events so far I was going to talk okay. Anything that people didn't cover, I would fill in the gaps. That um, then I will talk about the Ride on High because I think that we should all be very proud of Council's support and especially of Councillor Appleton who rode 100 kilometres in support of Ride Don't Hide, so that was wonderful. Um, and for the other councillors that were there in attendance. Um, also, um, there is an event coming up um, this Friday on Municipal Lawn, uh, there's a barbecue uh, that is free to the public uh, with some kids' activities that's coming up that's being put on by Oak Bay Parks Rec and Culture. And then that sure. evening, there's yeah. also music in the park at um, Windsor Park, no, sorry, Willows Beach. Uh, and that was start at 6 o'clock. And there'll be a wonderful band that's playing um, to celebrate the beginning of the July 1st weekend. So I hope to see everybody there. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Do you want to touch just on the um, Arts Alive tour as well, since you're Absolutely. the liaison for that group as well? Um, uh, we had a wonderful tour of all of the arts uh, within um, Oak Bay that have been uh, uh, sponsored by a lot of the businesses within Oak Bay, and I think there's 13 or 11 um, new statues that are scattered around the municipality. And we also have a uh, the, the pianos uh, will be out, I think, as of Friday that people can go and see. But the Arts Alive tour, um, there, there will be other tours. Uh, if you look on the Oak Bay Parks and Rec and Culture um, website, there'll be other tours of, uh, walking tours of the artworks along the avenue that people can participate in. And big thanks to our Public Arts Committee and our Arts Laureate, Barbara Adams, for putting all of this together for us. Thank you. And our staff who helped so much on that. Uh, Mr. Jones, I saw your finger sort of... Yeah, thank you, Your Just for the purposes of the minutes, I'm wondering if uh, Councillor Appleton can tell us how many months it took him to ride that 100 kilometers. Thank you. <laughs> He's an avid cyclist. Yeah, he did all right? in one day, Councilor which is Appleton. why he's uh, he's sitting a bit tenderly right now. On the <laughs> Councillor Green. Yes, thank you. Um, on Tuesday, I met with Victoria City uh, Council colleagues to, to talk about the format around community meetings and, and their goals and objectives for community meetings. So that was really enlightening and helpful, and I will share that with staff as soon as possible. Um, and then I attended the Greater Victoria Labor Relations Association meeting on Wednesday with Mayor Murdoch and our CAO, um, Lou Varela. And then um, I also participated in the Arts Alive. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. And it was truly, it was my first experience. It was a terrific event. So if you have an opportunity, please join one of the Arts Alive tours because the artists are there as well and they talk about the art and what inspired them and so on. And a lot of the donors are there, the supporters. So it was, it was a great event. Thank you very much. And thanks to our, specifically to Obey Parks and Rec. They provided a bus and a wonderful driver. So thank you very much. Oh, and then I attend. You know, as you get older, you lose track of all the things that you do. Uh, I also attended the Business Improvement Association Mixer. Um, and it was just that. There, were, there was the odd drink, of course. 
and it was at the pub, of course. Um, but it was a wonderful gathering uh, for uh, the BIA to host, and it brought all the business owners together, as well as members of the Oat Bay Tourism Committee, because they, they do have a connection. And uh, either Mayor Murdoch or other councillors that attended, like Councillor Braithwaite, um, or Councillor Appleton might also want to comment, but it, it was also a very good um, event. Thank you. Councillor Nee, now Councillor Patterson, and to uh, add? Uh, I do. Yeah, put your microphone on. Sorry. Um, on June 14th, in absence of Councillor Zelka, I attended the Water Commission's tour of the new disinfection plant and the unveiling of their new mobile uh, unit that they can use to provide disinfected potable water. I chose that instead of portable potable <laughs> water in response, in response to emergencies in the CRD. Um, and it was a great tour by the, by the Water Commission staff. And they also shared ideas for future projects and uh, to increase safety and also the work they're doing in um, analyzing the impacts of climate change on their business plans. And I also attended, of course, in May, the uh, Heritage Foundation meeting and would like to, everybody, mark their dates on this. There will be posters going up, but Saturday, July 20th, from 1 to 3 p.m., the Heritage Foundation is hosting a family architectural scavenger hunt on the front lawn of Municipal Hall. There's three levels of participation, very small, not so small, and not at all small, or adults. Um, and yes, there will be refreshments and prizes. So watch for the posters and mark your calendars for Saturday, January the 20th. And we are going to do the scavenger hunt, rain or shine. July 20th. You, you or July 20th. Yes, there we go. Councillor Zalka. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I can report that uh, when um, Councillor Patterson returned from the water tour, she only came with one water bottle, not for me, unfortunately. Uh, very, yes, I, I was hoping for two, but oh well, it was only one. Um, so uh, I can report uh, out, however, uh, uh, in, in um, a little more seriously, that uh, the uh, emergency program, Oak Bay Emergency Program, the radio comms trailer has arrived and uh, we had an unveiling last week. Um, if anyone is familiar with the, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, rather old comms um, uh, uh, vehicle called MERV, it will be retired. I think it's been leaking for much too long onto our radio equipment. So uh, we finally have a waterproof trailer that's going to be able to handle this. And, and I can tell you the, uh, all the volunteers are very excited by that. It's sort of very nerdy, I must say. Anyway, just wanted to report that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just a couple of quick things then. Uh, one, just uh, many, uh, many people probably uh, participated in the Sausage Fest this weekend, which is a great fundraiser for by the uh, fire department. Um, they're raising funds this year for the Oak BC Rescue, and I understand they got a significant increase to the grant from uh, BC Gaming, so they'll be able to buy their uh, their boat they've been fundraising for, uh, looks like this year or next, so it's uh, very good news. I also just uh, I attended the latest uh, Vancouver or Victoria Regional Transit Commission uh, board meeting, uh, fairly fulsome discussion. Uh, there are a number of topics, but I'll just do it. They did their, um, their year-end update, so... Uh, certainly from a financials perspective, very strong. This might be of interest to people. They're up to 27.3 million passengers last year, which is a 3.3% um, increase year over year uh, and about 1.4% over their budget. Um, there are still concerns that a big chunk of the money that funds the transit, it comes from gas taxes. And of course, as those taxes decline, that that drives a uh, need to, to supplement those those monies from other places. Um, the plan is still in place to add 24 new buses uh, and new routes over the next three years. Um, obviously, there's a recent announcement of widening of the uh, of the lanes out the uh, towards the west western communities. And there is uh, again continuous updates to the changes to the Jubilee area, which Oak Bay is part of. Um, they've had a lot of feedback from the community on on those on their proposed feedbacks. There's been a number of changes, uh, and they're uh, I believe they're coming to the to a council meeting in July uh, to do a quick update in terms of those changes. So. Uh, Mr. Han, is that correct? We're seeing nodding. I just want to make sure I'm not wrong. Uh, on yes, that. Your Worship, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. And I do appreciate uh, our engineering staffs working with, uh, with BC Transit so closely. And those are my updates. So thank you, everybody, for all the work that you do. Uh, item number five on the agenda, uh, resolution notice. Oh, this is my resolution. Um, 
this is a time of year whereby uh, we have the opportunity to put resolutions to UBCM or Union of BC Municipalities. Um, as uh, individual municipalities, we don't have much voice with the provincial government, um, but we do have a conference, uh, one regionally and one provincially every year. And uh, this is the chance if we make resolutions and they go to that body and they're approved, then the, the province is obligated to give a response. They don't have to do what we ask, but they have to give a response. Uh, so there's a number of resolutions here, some just for council um, and some for the UBCM resolution. So this first one up is an UBCM resolution. Um, and I'm not going to read it, but uh, I'll read the, the um, oh, actually, I actually don't have it in front of me here, the, <laughs> the resolution. <laughs> give me a second. Uh, I will move the resolution as here anyway, and oh, do you want to read it out for me? So save me the, the scrolling. The therefore it be resolved? Yes, Therefore please. it be resolved that the BC government review the homeowner grant exemption threshold to incorporate consideration of the average value of homes in a municipality or region in addition to the other current considerations. Second. Uh, so just a very quick, this actually, it, it's tax season, as many of you are probably aware, uh, and with tax season comes your your homeowner uh, notice, and, some, and a lot of people uh, have comment. A number of people have commented to me this year and last year that they've been uh, their assessment rises bump them out of the um, the homeowner grant, and uh, this has a, a obviously cumulative effect. It's a five hundred and seventy dollar grant for homeowners, um, but if your house exceeds the uh, the one point six five million dollar limit, then you no longer qualify for it. It, it declines to a point at about one point eight million. We get nothing. And so uh, the reality is that uh, our average house price in Oak Bay is around 1.25 million now, and, and so a lot of the houses are now uh, being bumped out of this exemption, even though people are living in their homes. Um, so this resolution just looks, and, and I th somebody sent me, a, uh, I thought it was a very detailed analysis, and you know, in 2016, their assessment was 1.089 million. They paid $6,340 in taxes in 2019, three years later. Their assessment with no changes to their house had gone up to 1.822 million. Uh, they completely lost their homeowner grants and their com combined taxes was now $8,400 and $60. So uh, it had gone up by over 33% and, uh, and over $2,000 in three years. Um, so 570 of that was the grant uh, cost. So uh, it's just a real problem. I'm not sure we're going to get much sympathy, frankly, across the province uh, for having very big expensive houses in Oak Bay. Um, but I do think it's reasonable to ask the province to at least consider uh, there's no reasonable way for people to move inside a community if the average prices are so high um, that they can't escape that. And a lot of people who are not rich uh, have houses that are worth a lot of money, uh, and this is a pretty substantial burden for them to bear. To, to bear. So that's the motion. Any discussion? No, it's a it's a motion. So the notice of motion was made last time. So this is just a resolution. So if it if it passes here, it will just go to UBCM, and uh, if they accept it, it'll make it onto the into the agenda package at UBCM. Uh, so I need to. I, I guess I moved it. Did I actually get a seconder? I I did. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you moved it and you seconded it. Perfect. Uh, questions, Councillor Appleton. Thank you, Worship. Just sorry, just very quickly. I I just note note that the actual motion itself. We're we're, we're proposing to put this forward to UBCM. The actual motion doesn't specifically reference going to UBCM, so I'm just wondering whether I, I'm totally in support of what's being presented here. I'm just wondering whether there needs to be an amendment to specifically direct staff to prepare a motion to UBCM. I'm, I'm not sure what the procedure is. No, fair to be enough. I, I, Mr. Jones, I, in the wording of this, I probably should have said a resolution for UBCM. Your Worship, that was my first error of the year. So uh, it actually, uh, there is. I should have had in their UBCM resolution. So this is something that we will include a clause saying uh, that it will be forwarded to the UBCM. Thank you for catching that. And I forgot, I was going to start off by just, if I could also just get an amendment. I, in my, I did a couple versions of this and I made a mistake that somehow got copied in that the percentage increase was, at, I put it at 1.85%. It was actually 3.125 and the grant amount was at 550 and it should be 570. So the... Yeah. The whereas will be will if if it just goes forward will reflect those corrections. Yes. I mean, I need a really need an amendment just to. Okay. Yeah. If, just looking around the tables, if he's okay with factual corrections. Okay. Thank you. Um, no other discussion then. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Um, item number six uh, on the table: resolution notice blue dot initiative. Oh, I'm just going to go back to my, oh, sorry, resolution number, sorry, it's number seven, uh, the Blue Dot Initiative by Councillor Appleton. 
I'll hand it over to you. Do you make the motion? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, I'm, I'm bringing forward a motion uh, that it be resolved that staff be directed to prepare a report on the Blue Dot Initiative so that Council may consider its adoption. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, you're welcome to motivate if you want. This is really just asking for a report so we don't probably need too much, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much to my council colleagues for considering this motion. Um, it, I, I really feel like uh, the Blue Dot uh, initiative is a, a worthy project for consideration by council that reflects some goals which are congruent with our strategic plan uh, and reflect some of the, the priorities and the, the values that are held really highly by Oak Bay residents. So. Uh, the, uh, the folks from Blue Dot have, have reached out to me, uh, you know, eager to provide more information. And so this, this resolution is just to allow a mechanism for which they, them to provide that formally to council so that we can uh, discuss that. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm just for a clarification again, um, I, you know, the Blue Dot program, it's, I, you know, it's obvious, it's a supportable initiative, obviously, but um, I just wonder if there's any specification about the kind of scope of a report you're looking from uh, from staff. I, I think that, thank you, Councillor uh, Nate. I, I think that the the structure of municipal adoption of the Blue Dot Initiative is is pretty uh, it has has been pretty formalized by this point. It's been in place for a number of years, and there's been uh, a number of local, well, over 130 municipalities and and a number of the CRD municipalities which have adopted it. So I think that the format of proposed adoption would be fairly standardized that comes forward from the presenting organization. So I think it would be a matter of staff sort of putting those options in front of council. Uh, Councilor Green? Oh. Councilor Green, go ahead. Through you, um, Mayor, to our staff, to our CAO, Ms. Varela. I think it would be helpful in the report, um, given the comments from Councillor Ney, that we understand also the impacts potentially on staff for this initiative, although I, I support it and, and certainly uh, you know, agree with the spirit of this notice. Would that be agreeable? Uh, through your, uh, your Worship, absolutely. Uh, I think when we bring forward any new project, it's a really good point that we have to consider it in the context of current workload. Uh, certainly uh, the director and I have discussed at a high level and uh, we'll bring back a report uh, that assesses those risks. Thank you, Councillor Zelda. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I appreciate, um, I'll be voting in, in favor of this and I appreciate any opportunity to remind uh, citizens of Oak Bay that we have declared a climate emergency. So uh, thank you for uh, the whereas clause with respect to that. And I do look forward to um, the um, a report coming back relating to uh, this aspect. Thank you. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, this is a follow-up on some of the other questions that we have heard. But um, in reading the Blue Dot Initiative, the declaration that's in the document includes 10 priority initiatives with specific objectives, targets, timelines. So I also <coughs> um, echo Councillor Green's comments about um, implementation of the program. My preference would be to, to have the report, the initial report from staff, um, focus on what resources would be required to implement the program and, and possibly um, consider doing that uh, and referring it to the 2020 strategic planning for council. That's always an option for us to, to consider at the time. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'm not seeing any. I'll look forward to the report. I have a natural bias against proclamations in general, but I will look forward to seeing this. And I do appreciate this does have some pretty uh, tangible ones that we might want to look at and, and incorporate. So uh, with that, all those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. And thank you for bringing that forward, Councillor Appleton. And you're up again. Library funding. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, this motion is rel is related to the library uh, funding that I've raised at, at Council previously. Uh, this is so therefore that it be resolved that Council request the Mayor to write the Minister of Education and the Premier to advocate for the restoration of library funding to a level that reflects both inflationary cost increases since 2009 and the value of the system to the province. 
and further that council endorse the preparation of a resolution to the Union of BC Municipalities to be presented at the September 2019 convention advocating for the restoration of library funding. Second. A seconder. Thank you very much. I think fairly straightforward by the nature of the motion. Um, I'm going to ask you the question of just the, the resolution that will go to UBCM will essentially reflect the same ask of restoring the funding. Is that the intent? Okay, perfect. I'll take a nod. It's good enough. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, comments? I'm not seeing any. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Then opposed. Thank you very much. And again, thanks for bringing that forward. And item number nine, we have resolution notice Beverage Container Recycling System, Councilor Braithwaite. Thanks, uh, Chair. Um, and I, mine goes, uh, therefore be it resolved that Council for the District of Oak Bay support the Ocean Legacy Foundation request to the province of BC to, number one, increase the regulated deposit rate. Number two, add all beverage containers to the depo deposit fund refund system. Number three, require producers to collect and report on the recycling of bottle caps. Number four, raise regulated targets to at least that achieved by Alberta and Saskatchewan with long-term targets matching the EU. Number five, enforce the regulated targets in a meaningful way such as requiring producers to pay for the cleanup of ocean plastics equal to the amount by weight that they, they fail to collect and recycle. And further, that this resolution be referred to the Union of BC Municipalities for consideration at its 2019 annual convention. Thank you. Second. Seconder. Uh, do you want to speak to this, Councilor Brithwaite? Um, sure. I think that um, we did have uh, a few people speak at one of our um, council meetings um, a few weeks ago. Um, and I think what really stood out to me was that they talked about how 1 million beverage containers go missing every year and 2.3 million um, beverage container caps go missing. And that is what is littering our, um, our outdoors. And as an avid um, hiker, uh, and I've hiked coastlines all over the world, I can guarantee you that I could not go probably more than a kilometer without picking up a piece of plastic litter. So there is a real prevalent problem and I, I would hope that this would take steps to help um, alleviate that problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion on this? No problem at all? Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Oppose, then oppose. Thank you. Uh, so that would then go to UBCM for the, if they ex and it goes to their body to see if it gets accepted onto their, onto the agenda package. Uh, thank you very much for squeezing those all in. This is an unusual number of, of uh, <laughs> motions that we have at this table. Uh, item number 10, now uh, we have, uh, this is just a bylaw memorandum from staff explaining the process. Uh, we are now looking at the, we've already done number 11 for the third and final reading and adoption of the outcome of the public hearing. And on to number 12, um, which is consideration of first and second reading and setting up a public hearing date for bylaw 4732 at 602 Newport. Um, we would traditionally here have a first and second reading. We don't normally debate at this stage because it really does go to public hearing to gather more information, um, but we will call the question. And if someone wants to raise a point or two, I'll, I'll allow that to happen after second reading, or sec the move, after the move, we'll move first and second reading together. So, can I have a motion to move first and second reading? Move sec first and second reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, Councilor Zelko? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I couldn't see the actual date embedded in the first and second reading of the public hearing date. Is it, uh, is it in the uh, memorandum? It's for us to set. Oh, okay. Because uh, it's uh, set um, at July eighth at the time. Currently, is that correct? Is July eighth a suggestion, or is it actually part of the motion? I wasn't sure. I'd like to ask that question we first. We should have it as part of the motion. We can we can separate them if you want to have the discussion and then setting of date. Uh, we can, let's do it all together. Let's have the motion uh, for first so, and second. So uh, I, I see that it's not actually part of the motion, but uh, I, I did. Um, I, I have been swayed by um, by some of the uh, comments I heard earlier on by the members of the public especially since um, there didn't appear to be extensive um, uh, community consultation with respect to this item. Um, and uh, some suggestions came forward to move the public hearing forward in July or possibly in September. Uh, I would certainly be open to the date being set two weeks beyond the, the uh, suggested 8th, which would put it at the 22nd of July. So if I may, I'm just, uh, what I'll do is, uh, we have a mover and a seconder for the motion. 
Can I get a, the motion to include the July 8th date and then we can have a motion to amend to a, to a different date if that's possible? That makes it a bit cleaner from a, a process perspective. Would you be willing to modify the, the motion to include the, the date? Then we can talk to the date as part of this discussion. Yes, I'll, uh, well, I'll amend the motion to include the date of the public hearing for discussion. Yeah. If you move July 8th as the, as the date and then we can uh, and move and second it? Okay, thank you. So it's moved and seconded with July 8th as the date. So now we can talk to the, to the date as a piece if you want to. Uh, okay, so if this has been uh, moved and seconded, I'd like to move an amendment then, that the date uh, be moved forward uh, uh, two weeks to the, um, to the next um, council meeting, which would be July 22nd. We actually wouldn't have a meeting on July 22nd. We only have one council meeting on July 8th mm -hmm. and July. July 8th, July 22nd, according to the official schedule oh, online. Do we have it? There is a meeting on the 22nd. Oh, my, my mistake. Council. Is that so correct? Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm getting my dates mixed up. Thank you, Councillor Okay, Zalta. so uh, 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 September is probably too far, although I, I know some, some of the public call for it, but I would, I'd, I'd like to move the motion, or uh, the amendment, excuse me, that we move the public hearing to the 22nd of July. Second. Moved and seconded. I'm seeing some con con some discussion from staff. So uh, just is there concerns raised here in terms of the date? Uh, Your Worship, it's just to understand uh, the expectation around public consultation in that t extended time period. It, it's, a, it's a valid point in the sense that I think there's the notice has been up for many months and there has been a lot of discussion. And really, it's, it's just a public hearing piece that would allow for the the public input up on that on that item so okay but I, is there any is there anything specific that you're thinking of from a consultation perspective because we wouldn't normally do any public consultation as part of this I'm hearing discussion around the table so I just want to before I come back to council staff your worship that. sorry I'm probably talking too loud uh, so there there actually should be two separate resolutions if if council wants to consider a different date so the first would be uh, first and second reading, and then uh, a separate resolution around uh, the date of the public hearing. Okay, procedurally, how do I just amend it back again, or what's the what's the process? Your Worship, I mean, if if council were in agreement, uh, you would consider that first. If if uh, if there was a, a need to. Uh, change the resolution you could do that but uh, with no, unanimous I have the power as chair to, to separate the two I'll just you could separate the two, the two. Yeah. okay so we have first and second reading is the is the guidance then to, to have that discussion and vote and then deal with the second part of the piece you, you worship that's up to council well that's that's what separating them sort of means to me so I'll, yeah. I'll treat it that way so we have first and second reading uh, so really this comes down to whether or not we're comfortable to do first and second reading and then moving on to the public hearing process um, is there any discussion around that? All right, all those in favor of first and second reading? Any opposed? Councilor Green opposed? No. Okay, just, just, just timing just that. Um, so we have first and second reading. Uh, now we just need a setting of a public hearing date. That's correct, Your Worship. Okay. If I may? Yes. I'd like to propose as the public hearing date of this um, uh, be set to be the 22nd of July. Move 22nd of July, is there a seconder for that date? Councillor Patterson, uh, Councillor Zelka, you've already sort of spoken to this, but you feel free to, to if you want to add anything else. Yes, I appreciate it. Uh, essentially, uh, as I as I alluded to, um, the um, the suggestions uh, as brought forward by the members of the public fr of the neighbours in the area um, uh, suggested that a bit more time, especially since they have recently, it sounds like they have recently struck a new community association, would uh, afford uh, a time for the group to organise and do whatever they need to do. Of course, it would be independent of the district, it would be independent of council for, um, uh, to bring forward the ideas that, uh, that uh, obviously need to be brought forward at a public hearing. So that's why I would propose a bit more time than maybe uh, 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 some of the potential other suggested times. And, uh, and for me, I know some, some suggested September. September would be, uh, I, I think, a bit too far into the future for, in this case. Okay, the council agree? Just a question for clarity around the legal requirements um, in terms of notice, public hearing, and, and dates. Through you to Ms. Riella or m m Mr. Jones, what are the restrictions for us as council in terms of changing dates, or, or you know, what are the legal requirements and, and limits? 
I think it should actually be for Mr. Anderson if I'm. Or, if or I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. That's okay. It's my job to figure out who to send it to. <laughs> I send it to whoever looks most nervous instead of my usual process. That's really <laughs> not very nice. Mr. Anderson. Big shoulders. Uh, your, your Worship, uh, for a July 8th uh, public hearing, we have adequate time to provide the legislative notice for, for that meeting. So by extension, if there was a July 22nd public hearing date set, we would also have uh, time to provide the um, legislative notice for such meeting. A supplementary question through you to Mr. Anderson. Is September feasible also or not? I mean, I, I, I mean legally. Uh, on that specific note, uh, the same comment would apply to September as would July 22nd. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councillor Appleton? Uh, not so much for or against, but just council should be, uh, uh, just in terms of ensuring that there's quorum, council should be aware that I'm most likely not going to be present at the July 22nd meeting. Councillor Braithwaite? And I will probably not be present either. Okay. I plan to be here, but hopefully we have a quorum. Uh, I do appreciate that when we have these meetings, as we try and have all of council present for land use decisions, for uh, whether there's any sense of controversy or consideration, just we have the broadest sense of, of debate. So that makes me worried. I think that we, I would like to have the, the full council here, if at all possible. Uh, if I may just sort of get a look around the table. Are people here on July 8th? Because that would, any nods? In general, yes, everybody appears to be here on July 8th. So that may lend a better situation to the July 8th date. Councillor Zalka? Uh, question through you to staff with respect to uh, folks who aren't here physically but potentially could attend via uh, electronic means. Um, how many uh, um, members uh, of council are allowed to lend, uh, attend electronically uh, simultaneously? Uh, we are not allowed to have council attend public hearings electronically. This is if I call my piece right. We can attend the council meeting afterwards for the, de for the debate. Ms. Hopkins, is that correct? I just I'm going from memory. Okay. Which of those correct? <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's a problem for the public hearing portion. Council the Green. Thank you. I'm I'm mindful of the point though that the public made about the holiday period and about the fact that, like us, many people may not be available during July and August, and we have no meetings in August as well. So I'm 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 just raising that as another point for consideration. Um, but I I would look to staff for some guidance on a date that late uh, or that early in the fall. Thank you. I don't, I don't know that there's any, I'm gonna, we have meetings in September for sure, although we do have a break for UBCM towards the end of the end month, but we could certainly schedule this in September if that was the will of council. I, d I think the pros and cons here are clearly that if we, even July is getting into the summer season, uh, and the later it goes, the harder it's going to have to have people representative. The shorter we make it, the, the less opportunity there is for people to sort of gather together and get information. So it's really up to council. We have a motion on the table right now for the 22nd. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to support that personally. I think that we need want to have, if we can make any effort to have people here, I think we need to have that. Um, but look for wisdom if that fails, then to find another date. I'm going to... I'm going to call the question if there's no other discussion on the 22nd. Are all those in favor of the 22nd? Two in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so that, that date fails. We'll try and find another date. Um, someone throw out a date and we'll see if we can make it work. I'd like to make a motion that the public hearing date be retained as July the 8th as originally proposed. Do I have a seconder for that date? I'll second for um, conversation. All right, conversation shall we have. Okay, uh, Councillor Appleton, do you want to speak to the date? I, I, thank you, Your Worship. I, I, I'm totally uh, sympathetic to, to uh, the, the, uh, the, the interest in the topic, um, although I, I do concur uh, with your comments uh, just now regarding, you know, that there has been information posted about, uh, the development for, for some time. Um, uh, we don't really have an option, uh, to provide additional information to members of the public at this stage of the game. So, um, you know, uh, council is making a, uh, is, is, is meeting their legislated requirement and obviously we'll hear any and all folks who want to come to speak to the issue at the public hearing. Uh, so, uh, 
I'm, I'm just in favor of keeping it at its current date. Okay. Any other discussion on the July 8th date? I think it's this or September at this point, so we'll see if any other things that were complicated we just have to decide. So I'll call the question. All those in favor of July 8th as a public hearing date? Seeing if, and those opposed? Three opposed? Oh. <laughs> You're going to make me do this, aren't you? I'm to choose this, this date. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to say yes to July 8th. We can always decide at that point that we can defer it again if we don't feel it's a, there's appropriate information or information shared. Uh, so the motion will pass. We'll have the, the date set for July 8th. I think there's interest in, in having this conversation sooner rather than later. As I said earlier, I would really encourage people, uh, you can start writing now if there's, if there's, if there's considerations you want us to make. Um, uh, please send those to us. And I would encourage members of council to, to visit Linkley's and Newport and have a look at the site to get a sense of that, that property because it is uh, fairly unique in the, in the community. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we have... Sorry, my, my iPad keeps popping back to the top every time I, I reopen it. So uh, that's it. We have a, need, a motion to adjourn to in camera. I'll move that in accordance. Do we not have one more after this than the 13? Or is that? Is that both oh. or do we, is it a separate motion? Oh, it's a heritage designation. I, sorry, we do need a separate motion for 4733. So. If I can just have the motion to first and second reading. First and second reading of bylaw 4733. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? And set the same public hearing date. Yes, the motion. The motion. Move that the public hearing date for bylaw 4733 be set for July the 8th. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Not a, Councilor Green? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just turned you too quickly. Uh, all those, so it's unanimous. Thank you very much. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll move that in accordance with section 91A and C of the community charter that the open portion of the meeting of council be adjourned and that a closed session be convened to discuss personal information about an identifiable individual who holds or is being considered for a position as an officer, employee, or agent of the municipality or another position appointed by the municipality in labor relations or other employer relations. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming out on such a nice evening. Have a good evening.